So what is the Gizmondo? This is the story of the bumblebee. Its wings are too small and its body too big. According to all principles, it's too heavy for its wings. It just can't fly. But no one has told this to the bumblebee. So it flies and flies. He doesn't care much about principles, do you? Mobile console systems are a relative thing of the past in today's age. With every man, dog, and hairless pygmy having a high-powered computer in their pockets nowadays at the ready. The king of the mobile console market, Nintendo, still has stock in that market with the Switch, but they were smart to combine their mobile empire with their wayward modern consoles to make something still innovative in this new age. But years ago, every company wanted to throw their hat in the mobile ring to challenge Emperor Nintendo. And with that stage set, let's take a trip back to 2005 to learn of a story of a lesser known mobile console with drama and backstory pouring out of every orifice. First of all, what in the everlasting fuck cakes is a Gizmondo? Well, it's a mobile console designed by company Tiger Telematics, released in 2005. Second of all, what in the absolute hell were they thinking? Nintendo basically had the mobile systems market under their thumb. Sega and eventually Sony couldn't withstand the might of Mario. What makes you think you of all companies could stand out? And no, Tiger Telematics is not Tiger Electronics, maker of such fine gems as the Tiger Handhelds and the R-Zone, which is a story within <laughs> itself. Tiger Telematics was a Swedish electronics company founded in the year 2000 as Eagle Eye Scandinavian, a small distribution business. Its founder was Carl Freer, a Swedish businessman and entrepreneur. The company did nothing of big importance until it merged with Floor Decor, a carpet retailer based in Jacksonville, Florida, for whatever reason. And with their powers combined, they made Tiger Telematics, the up-and-coming gaming developer headed by Freer and his new business partner, Stefan Eriksson, to take on the big boys of Sony and Nintendo in the UK gaming market. And take them on, they certainly did! <laughs> the Gizmondo began life known as the Game Track, first unveiled on their website around October 2003. It was initially concept as a mobile competitor to the other portable consoles of the day. The Game Boy Advance? Yeah, but that's small time. What they really had to worry about is the Big Bad Daddy Engage. That part cell phone and part taco had Tiger Telematics shooketh. They have video games and other things? Fuck it. Our console has so much more. 320 by 240 pixel resolution, 128 megabytes of RAM, running on a Windows operating system, a speaker, a Bluetooth, SD card compatibility, a camera, GPS, all of it. All of it. On paper, that sounds like an impressive piece of technology, especially for the age it was released. The game track was shown off as a concept at Las Vegas CES in January 2004 and at the German CE Bit Show in March 2004, during which I assume the name Game Track got laughed out of both buildings because soon afterward, the console was officially renamed the Gizmondo, mostly because the doohickey name was taken. With all this stuff crammed in, the console had to be expensive, right? Well, that was another advancement of this new handheld. You could either pay $400 full price for your standard Gizmondo or you could pay $229 for the Gizmondo, but you get smart ads, interrupting your gameplay every now and again like you're in the middle of a YouTube video. I mean, that's worth it, right? Right? Tiger Telematics went all in on advertisement for the Gizmondo. So much money was spent on parties and drinks and, uh, more parties. One particular party, in fact, had a gluttony of celebrity guests to promote the Gizmondo including Busta Rhymes, Pharrell, Sting, and most importantly, Tom Green. They even had more celebrities and magazine adverts promoting the thing, including such standouts like British Formula One driver Jensen Button. Well, hold on to that excitement, because executive Stefan Eriksson also worked on promoting, 
by participating in the 24 hours of Le Mans race in a sponsored Ferrari, which promptly shit itself at the start line and didn't even make it into the race. But, 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 you know what? Screw advertisement. The console is the most powerful. We don't even really need it. It'll sell like hotcakes, you see. The Gizmondo finally made his appearance first in the UK on March 19, 2005, and the Sweden in the United States later in the year due to delays. And the gamble paid off spectacularly. The Gizmondo flew off shells and uh, no, <laughs> no. The Gizmondo bombed spectacularly with fewer than 25,000 units sold over his lifespan earning it the title of one of the biggest sales failures ever released in the handheld market. But what could have happened? It had so much potential. Well, here's what happened. First of all, the retailers that housed the product were few and far between. And even then, most of them were high-end retail stores. In the US, the console wasn't even available in stores. You had to find them in mall kiosks. You know, where you typically find stolen ROM consoles. Second, before the console ever released, Tiger Telematics let slip an announcement that they had a widescreen variant of the console in development, which led some consumers to believe getting a lowly base console wouldn't be worth it in the end. Psst, hey, the widescreen version was never released. Third, do you know how many games were released for the Gizmondo? 14. Yes, only 14. Oh wait, except if you live in the US, and then you get nine games. Don't you feel lucky, you bloody Yanks? And with such classics like FIFA Soccer 2005, Hockey Rage 2005, Richard Burns Rally, SSX3, Toy Golf, how could you not get excited? They did have a typing tutor in development though, so that would be fun, even though the handheld had no keyboard peripheral for sale whatsoever. Ah, but don't forget the breakout hit and clear best-selling game, Sticky Balls. <laughs> A puzzle game mixing pool and Puyo Puyo. Fun. At this point, Tiger Telematics were hemorrhaging money. All of the wasteful spending and failing advertisements didn't help. But it also didn't help that the company sent money to companies to develop for the train wreck that conveniently got canceled or in most cases went out of business. That doesn't sound fishy at all. Then October 2005 rolled around and a Swedish press paper was released which did some digging into Tiger Telematics finances and found some dubious behavior. For one, it was ever so quietly exposed that executive Stefan Eriksson and two others had previous dealings in the little known venture capital known as the Swedish Mafia. You heard me, he had connections with the mob. And once that was known, all the dirty laundry came tumbling out. Previously 10-year prison sentences, fraud from shell developers given money, counterfeiting, and the fact that another executive had an active warrant. With all this out in the open and people waiting to reclaim their already stolen money, it's not surprising that multiple executives resigned from the company and board, including Ericsson and even Carl Freer himself, who had his own fraud cases looming around him. The Gizmondo ended up not lasting a full year because after 300 million in piling up debt, Tiger Telematics declared bankruptcy, starting with his Europe branch on January 23rd, 2006, with the Swedish and American arms following suit. The Gizmondo was officially dead. So what happened afterwards to these crazy bunch of characters? Well, Stefan Eriksson, inspired by the destruction of his dear project, decided to go straight, get his life together, and get deported from America after crashing his Ferrari while driving intoxicated and on drugs. Whoops. Well, you can't accuse the Gizmondo of not being ambitious. So much stuff was thrown into one handheld to try and compete with the Emperor. And the only thing that happened was a glorious drug fuel crash and burn. Do you think if the company didn't completely botch the build up and launch of this console, it would have had a better fate in regards to sales? Well, no, nope. no. I'm pretty sure this console was doomed to fail from the beginning. Even if the Gizmondo had competent leadership the lack of games would probably be a death sentence around a GBA or the upcoming PSP, and nothing about the console would have saved it from its fate. Sorry to you Sticky Balls fans, but you'll never find a better meme than saying a video game console was funded by the Mafia. This console gets one car wreck 
out of five. Yeah. <laughs>